Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I'm Justin, and this is continuing looking at the new features in Blender 2.8. And uh, we've already done um, the new bugs and the new features. Um, so this video is going to be about some of the new changes, not new features necessarily, just uh, things that have been changed, like shortcuts and all of that stuff, from Blender 2.79 to Blender 2.8. If you want to see the rest of the videos, go up there, click the card that I hope that I remember to create. <laughs> and then you can, uh, if you haven't seen the other two, you can go back and watch those. But anyway, let's get started. So the first noticeable change for me was the maximize area. So to uh, demonstrate this, I'm just gonna bring up my timeline here. So we've got three areas here. We've got this area, this area, and this area. If I do control spacebar, that will maximize the area. Previously in 2.79, it was shift spacebar. So that's just a, a minor change there. So control spacebar will toggle between maximize area and that's wherever you have your cur mouse cursor. So if I have my mouse cursor over here, control spacebar. Oh, it looks the same because uh, these aren't actually the properties. Um, hold on. Now, if I go over to my editing full, uh, no editing details. I've duplicated different workspaces for uh, different things that I like to do and actually in the next video I'm going to show you my setup and how I like to work. So um, but for now uh, I'm just going to show you again this maximize area control spacebar will maximize the properties. So again it's just wherever you have your mouse hovering over that will maximize. You can also come up here to each of the menu bars or the toolbars or whatever they're called, and you can click mac maximize area. And um, if you click it again, you'll see tile area. So this is tiled because it has more than one area. Same thing, I can come down here, maximize area, and all of that good stuff. And I think I've already gone over this. So that is the first one. The second new change is the control home and the control end. Um, and what that does is if I hover over here and I actually hit home, home is the same. It'll it'll um, basically everything that you have in your scene, it will fit into the window. As you can see, I already have my frame range fitting my video and my audio. Um, but if I wanted to end my video here, let's just say just arbitrary, then I would hit control end and that would be in the sequencer. Uh, before what I had to do in 2.79 is it wouldn't work in the sequencer, but you'd have to hover over here and hit E for end. Uh, same thing if I wanted to make this start here, it's control home to make a start frame. And basically this is my frame range. So if I play this, it would only play to here and then it would start back over here at the frame range. Previously in 2.79, I'd have to hover over here and hit S for start. So it was S and, N S and E here in the timeline. But I like this change because uh, I actually don't need to have the timeline expanded like this. Now I still want to use um, some of the controls up here for the timeline. So for example, if I wanted to do AV sync or audio scrubbing, I turn that on and off. Or if I needed to, um, uh, I can change my start frame and end frame here. So one uh, will make that start frame back there. So I don't want to get rid of the timeline totally, but I just want to drag this down and put it here. Um, and really the only reason I would have to use this would be the start and end um, frames in 2.79. So it's really nice because then I can just get rid of this. And now uh, I can do all of my uh, scrubbing and editing and all of that stuff in here. And again, control end, and that works just fine. And I still have the controls that I need here. Okay, moving on to new change number three, and that is uh, play is now spacebar. <laughs> Now this is one of the first things that I changed in 2.79 because uh, in that one it was Alt A to play and pause. And first of all, having play and pause be two buttons is just not, that's not gonna cut it. I need to be able to quickly play and pause. Um, so spacebar is the most obvious. I think that's pretty standard for other video editors, but yeah, so that is really easy just to tap that spacebar with your thumb. Okay, new change number four is select all is slightly different. So to select all, you can press A, and that does select all. But uh, hitting A again doesn't toggle that. It doesn't deselect it. Um, so to deselect all, 
you hit control or alt a and that will deselect all you can also double tap a which is similar to uh, my h and double h for uh, unhide hide and unhide it's not like that by default uh, by default it's alt h to unhide but this is by default so there's two ways to deselect double a and then alt a um, but this is this helps to avoid a lot of confusion uh, as like do I have everything selected or not uh, so if you just get in the habit of a is select all alt a is deselect all then you don't have to wonder whether or not you've selected everything or deselected everything so helps to eliminate confusion I like that okay new change number five is unmeta is now control alt G by default so if I select all of them and then do control G that will make them a meta which is the same as it was in 2.79 but to unmeta you would think it's just alt G like a lot of things alt A alt H it's not and I don't know why, <laughs> but the default is Control Alt G, and that will unmeta the strip. It will unpack anything that is already in a meta strip. To me, that's a little cumbersome, especially when I don't think Alt G does anything. So Control G, and then if I do Alt G, I don't know. Maybe that makes a group. I, I don't know. Maybe something is happening, uh, and I just don't know it. But uh, Control Alt G is just there's too many buttons so if alt g isn't that important or if it's not being used then um i'm just going to change it to, back to alt g next up new change number six we have the hold cut so the hold cut is basically just the same as a hard cut in 2.79 it's just they changed the wording so you can see this hold offset over here um so if i take these and do a shift K shift K is a hard cut but now it's called hold cut alternatively you can come up here to strip and then hold cut you can see that's shift K but basically that just means if I bring this up uh, there is no offset here so uh, I have basically eliminated any of the video that's before this uh, that's different than a soft cut which is just K and if I bring this up here you can see if I extend this one out, uh, basically it just continues that video, which is the same. It's a duplicate of this, basically. There is something here, but it's the first frame. So if I start playing, but we just don't have. It's just one frame, display. and that is that is uh, held, and it's the first frame from where we cut. Here you can see it's holding, 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 and then right when when the video that blue starts. That's what it is. So anyway, so that's what a hold offset is. You can adjust that here. So even though you do make a, a hold cut, uh, you haven't completely lost that video. You can change this offset here. But if you change it here, basically it's gonna maintain this as the start. So if I uh, change this offset, let's say I just change that to zero. Um, well, basically all I've done is extended that video out uh, so it will it will keep that that start frame uh, and then extend everything out. Uh, likewise, if I do the end, and it's going to push that uh, that end in as well. It almost works uh, very similar to the cropping. So if I do the crop, if I crop from the right, it will bring that over from the right to the left. But if I crop from the left, it will also bring it from the right, the right to the left, but it's cropping out uh, the left, and it's a little it's a little confusing. But now, if I bring that over, you can see what's happening. That's similar to the hold cut here, and you can kind of see that representation with the blue uh, kind of being cut off at both ends. It's the same concept here. Okay, so the last change I'm going to talk about today, change number seven, is F3 is now search by default. So if you need to find anything, F3, uh, originally it was spacebar, which I didn't think made a lot of sense, obviously, because I thought spacebar should be play. So now you can use F3 to search. And um, of course, if, as you search, you can see whichever ones have the um, shortcuts, you can, you can see those shortcuts over here. 
Okay, so that's all the major ones that I've run across. I'm not going to go ev over every single one of them. In order to see the shortcuts of anything, you can actually go to the menus up here and just the drop down menus. You can see a lot of those shortcuts on the side over here. Um, and if you don't like any of the shortcuts, basically, you can come over here to edit preferences, go to key map. The first thing you see here are the preferences where this is the most common things people might want to change. You can see spacebar action here, play. Uh, you can also make it tools or search uh, back to kind of what it was before. Uh, of course, I like to keep that as play. You can also select with the left or right here, which is very common. Um, and you've got some other uh, things you can look at here that are other common things. But if you wanted to find something different than what you see here, you can always search for it either by name or by key binding. So if I wanted to do by name, and let's say you forgot how to duplicate a strip, and so you're like, okay, I want to duplicate a strip. So just type duplicate, uh, and then find there. Now there's a lot of them uh, because this is you know a whole 3D editing package. So you want to find the one that is for the sequencer. So down here, sequencer duplicate strips is shift d depending on the editor that you're using it's going to be different so we have alt d control d shift control d left mouse uh, for different um different editors within blender alternatively if i just get rid of this and i go to name key binding a good example is the uh the unmeta strip so i want to know if alt g does anything so i'm just going to type alt and then g and now we can see uh, all of the things that Alt-G does. So sequencer, unmeta strip, we have control Alt-G because Alt-G is included in control Alt-G. Um, but I just want to do strictly just Alt-G. So Alt-G clears a pose. In object mode, it clears a location. Uh, and those are the only two things. The NLA editor, for some reason, I, I can't remember if this restores the one above it or the one below it. Um, because I don't remember changing this one. Well, let's just try it. Restore. I probably did something <laughs> that I shouldn't have. But anyway, it didn't change any either of these. So I am just going to click here, and it says press a key. So I'm going to do Alt and hold Alt and then press G, and there you go. Alt G is now on Meta Strip. Close that. Let's test it out. I'm gonna Shift Select this one to select both of those and then control G as a meta strip and just alt G is on meta simple as that all right there you have it there's those are the new changes in blender 2.8 for the video sequence editor um, in the next video I'm going to show you my layout and my setup I, I know I've done this already but um, since I've been editing all of these videos I've kind of tweaked it a little bit to make it a little bit more efficient so yeah stay tuned for that and you'll see me in the next one